Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I had a long day at work. I did really big transformations and I decided and my client allowed me to do her session and we took her from a bright, bright level 10, nine blonde to the darker blonde and more brunette like. It still got that nice brawny touch to it, but a touch of brunette as well. And if you wanna see my favorite technique to try to achieve something like this, then keep watching. If you have yet to subscribe, please feel free to do so and hit the bell as I post two to three times a week and you don't wanna miss it. All right guys, without further ado, let's get into today's video. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I have my lovely client, Sarah, in my chair. We took her blonde. This is her second session with me. She came to me about four months ago. We did her really blonde and beautiful and fixed her mistakes that were in her hair. And now today she decided she wanted to go on the bronder brunette side of things. Not too dark, but a nice bronze for the springtime. So I'm going to be mixing up my Gold Ball OxyCure Rider Dye Lightener with 20 volume. In my 20 volume, I will be using my Liquid Gold Olaplex, 1 16th ounce as always in every bowl of lightener I use. And my low light formula will be Wreck and Shades EQ, mostly 5N, because that's the tone I really want. But I also need to fill that color, so I will be using a little bit of 6GB and a little bit of 5CB. I know CB sounds scary, copper brown, but trust me, it will be fine. I only used a drop of it. It will not turn her hair copper. It's just going to give her that nice filling she needs to give this a nice rich color. If you've been following along with me for a while now, then you know anytime I use Shades EQ for an all-over color or a low light, I like to use it with 10 volume. It helps it stick in there a little bit better. It remains a demi-permanent. Nothing changes. It still feels amazing in the hair. It's still acidic. It just lets it stick in the hair a little bit longer and have a little bit more coverage. And that's why I like doing it with low lighting and all-over colors. When I'm toning or something like that, I always mix it with the dedicated process solution. If you notice, I am doing a regular stitched highlight today, and I am mostly focusing on adding low lights throughout our hair, but I'm doing one to one, one low light to one highlight. When I do the highlights, I am specifically focusing on the root and feathering down through any darker pieces from old subsections, just so that this still, even though we're darkening her, keeps her very refreshed at the root area and can go long and have beautiful longevity. So when I'm doing a regular stitched highlight, in this case, highlight low light, I will like to still sometimes do money pieces depending on what I'm doing, whether it's a blonde, um, even though we're taking her more brondy, like nice and dimensional, I still want her to have that pop around the front of the face. So what I like to do, you guys know when I like to do my hairline, sometimes I'll do a couple of slices that are very, very small and fine and back it up with really tightly packed baby lights until I gradually get bigger and bigger into my normal baby lights. 
Well, when I'm doing a traditional highlight stitch everywhere else around the entire head, I normally won't do any slicing. I normally will just go in and make sure I do baby lights around that money piece area. For her, I'm not doing a whole hairline around both sides. I'm just focusing on the bang box. And with that being said, I'm just doing really tightly packed baby lights, minimal subsections with no slicing. It will still give us a beautiful, amazing money piece. Do not fear. Another tip you guys probably can notice is every time I'm doing a highlight or low light, I am color coordinating it with a color foil. So I believe with my low lights, I'm doing them in the rose foils, which is the rose gold. And my regular silver foil is my highlight. It's really good to do things like that because it keeps you very organized. I also did just all rose gold around the money piece area as well so I know to decipher those foils for where the money pieces were because they'll process a little quicker and I can always pull them out sooner. It's good to utilize different color foils or different kinds of foils. I tend to do this very often especially with the money headband. So when I like to add some depth into the base area, or I'm just trying to cover grays or anything of the sort, I do something called a paint between. This is what I like to do when I'm doing a root smudge, when I want there to be a prominent root, because when I go to the bowl and root smudge her, it's gonna give me a really prominent root area. For this, I always go even the littlest bit darker on the root than I do for the low light. So I did 5N with a little 4NB. And of course, I mixed it with 10 volume. Oh, I never did this side. You didn't? No. <laughs> All right, guys. So as you can see, we have finally washed her out, shampooed her. I put Olaplex number two on the mids and ends, so it acts as a barrier, and she gets a treatment at the same time. I am going to be using Reckon Shades EQ 5N 5NA on her root smudge formula. I'm going to do the teardrop effect where I bring it down further in the back, higher up towards the face. You can take a look at that money bang box area and see the money pieces are very, very prominent and beautiful, even though we did just tightly pack baby lights. You don't always have to do slicing around the money piece area. Tightly packed baby lights will do it for you, and it's still beautiful and well blended. Once I did the smudge everywhere else, I left the hairline like I always do out until the last minute. I slightly tapped around the face, or more so shadowed, combed it through with my Sanvia comb, let her process for about 10 minutes. Then I took the all over toner formula and applied it with her sitting up. I usually don't do this. I usually lay them back in the sink, but I wanted her to actually have this color sit on and actually suck in and really be on there for a while to give her longevity. So I applied both toners, mixed them in together, and for her all over toner, I use a nice coolness with a little bit of warmth. I did 7N, 7P, 7NB, 8V, 8GI, 8N, 9P. 
She wanted to be a cool bronze. Now, bronze doesn't mean it's always necessarily warm. It could be cool or warm. It's just a mix of brunette and blonde. OMG, you guys. Look at that before and look at this after. Such a cool toned bronze. Beautiful, creamy, bronze. Dimensional. I'm speechless. Beautiful money pieces. Anything and everything she wanted. We achieved all with a traditional highlight low light. Um, and we're obsessed. We just love it so very much. I hope you learned something today in this video. Leave video ideas down below in the comments. I love you all so very much. I will see you in the next one, guys. As always, so long for now. Mwah!